there and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Angie and I'm a chemist who loves makeup. So today we're going to be looking at the ingredients in the Fenty Skin Line. I'm sure you already know, this is Rihanna's new skincare line to accompany her Fenty Beauty line. I will give you my thoughts based on the ingredients, how I think it'll perform, who I think it'll be good for, about some of the actives. So first we're going to dive into the sunscreen moisturizer. So the SPF of this is 30. SPF only measures UVB rays. These are the ones that burn you and can lead to skin cancer. In this case, the ingredient homosolate is going to protect against UVB rays. That's primarily where it absorbs in the UVB spectrum, but it's usually not enough. So in this case, it is accompanied by octosolate, which also absorbs in the UVB rays. UVB rays are not the only types of UV radiation that can cause damage to the skin. So can UVA rays. These are thought to be what causes the visible signs of aging. And in this case, avobenzone, which primarily absorbs in the UVA range, which is going to help protect against those UVA rays in order to prevent those visible signs of aging. Since SPF only measures UVB rays, I'm not sure at what this percentage would do, but it is going to help protect against those UVA rays. For typical day-to-day -day use, I feel like this combination will probably be sufficient in terms of sun protection. And these ingredients are going to be what people typically refer to as a chemical sunscreen. A better name would be an organic sunscreen because they are made up of organic compounds, meaning they contain carbon. That's the chemistry definition is, is molecules that contain carbon, whereas zinc oxide, Titanium dioxide do not have any of those carbon molecules and those are would be inorganic sunscreens. The benefit of these organic sunscreens is that they aren't going to leave that white cast as the mineral sunscreens do. So this is going to be better for those who have darker skin because there won't be a white tint you'll have to deal with. This formula is full of humectant so it is going to feel very hydrating when you put it on. It has glycerin which is a little bit heavier and butylene and pentylene glycol which are going to be a little bit lighter, closer to the consistency of water. Like I said these are called humectants which means they are very good at attracting water to themselves and by doing so this hydrates the skin. Butylene glycol is also typically used as a solvent for sunscreen ingredients meaning that those ingredients dissolve into it and it will help active ingredients penetrate the skin better. So you can't have humectants alone. In order to keep that moisture in, you need some sort of occlusive ingredient that will prevent trans epidermal water loss, meaning it'll protect your skin from losing water off the top layer. Otherwise, all those humectants go to waste and in a drier environment, they will just evaporate right off your skin. So that's where the safflower olisomes come in. So these are basically little spheres of vitamin E and plant oil, and these are used as an energy storehouse by the seed during plant germination. And the supposed benefit to these, I say supposed because this is information from the manufacturer's website, is that these spheres don't collapse immediately, meaning when you apply them, they're not gonna break down immediately. So it's gonna give you kind of a time release sort of effect. So it should keep up moisturizing your skin, preventing that water loss throughout a longer period of time. This will also leave a soft feeling to the skin as well. So this is not going to be a long wearing sunscreen. This is not going to be the sunscreen for you if you're very active out in the sun, swimming, that kind of thing. Because there aren't a lot of film formers. I did see one which is the Acrylate, Acryl Acrylate Cross Polymer. And these help form a thin film on the skin. This you'll see in a lot of long wearing foundations for instance to help keep it on the skin longer. Dimethicone is the only silicone I saw, and this also creates a barrier to prevent transepidermal water loss. It doesn't mix with water, which also will help it last longer. And both of these ingredients that I just spoke about are very low on the list. So they're gonna have a little bit of that effect, but not enough to really last you a long time. So although this won't be long wearing because these won't give it longevity, this is gonna help it play well with your makeup. Excessive films and thick silicone layers can sometimes not work well when you're trying to apply makeup on top of it because these layers are intended to kind of create a barrier so things don't mix with it and last longer. In terms of other active skincare ingredients, there's niacinamide, which is very popular right now, and is a form of vitamin B3. It's supposed to help with hydrating the skin and reducing the visibility of pores, to name a couple of things. There's hyaluronic acid and sodium hyaluronate, which are also humectants and are a very, also a very trendy ingredient. But in this case, I think the glycerin, pentylene glycol, and butylene glycol are doing more of the work in terms of 
the humectant properties. And there's also gluconol actone, which is an acid, it's a PHA, similar to an AHA in terms of having exfoliating properties, but these ingredients are all very low in there. I don't think you're gonna see major benefits from any one of these. Perhaps all of these together will help your skin, but none of these in particular are really carrying this formula in terms of how it's gonna help your skin. And there's also a lot of extracts which have antioxidant properties and very similar to those other ingredients I just mentioned. I think the concentration is really low. They're not doing much, but they are antioxidants, so that's not a bad thing in terms of helping your, so that's not gonna be a bad thing for your skin. So also, let's Let's address the issue of fragrance and the oil ingredients added for fragrance because I think what we hear a lot of times is to avoid fragrance in skincare and for me personally I don't mind fragrance in my products obviously not a lot but I do enjoy having a mild fragrance it helps the sensory experience of enjoying my product I find that I haven't really reacted poorly to products that contain fragrance and I think for the most part unless you have sensitive skin this isn't really something that would be an issue for you. If you do find yourself to be sensitive to ingredients containing those oils or fragrance this is not going to be the line for you. It does have fragrance in all three products and from what I've seen from other people's reviews, it is noticeable. But if you haven't had issues with fragrance, I wouldn't write off a product just because it has fragrance. So overall, I think this is a good day-to-day -day sunscreen. I, this isn't gonna be very thick because of those lack of silicones, so it'll probably apply very easily on the face, which is obviously beneficial for a sunscreen. And it's gonna probably feel dewy as well due to all those humectants and the lack of film formers and dimethicone, which kind of gives you a matte appearance. So before I move on to the toner, I want to shout out Lab Muffin Beauty Science. She is also a chemist. She has a review of the products up on her blog right now. That is where I got the ingredients list from, so I'm going to link that as well. Moving on to the Fat Water Pore Refining Serum. So the main ingredient in this is going to be Witch Hazel. So it's supposed to be pore refining. It is an astringent, anti-inflammatory, antibacterial. So if you're oily, this might be good for you. It'll help control the oil a little bit. There is butylene glycol as a humectant, niacetamide as well, and the extracts that will function as antioxidants, which is good, but you can get that from a lot of products in this line. A lot of people are comparing this to a hydrating essence, not really my jam. So this would probably be the product that I personally would pass on. I don't feel like it would add a lot to my routine and it's something that I feel like I can benefit from out of the other products. If you are oily, if you do have redness, this might be good for you due to the witch hazel. But for me personally, I don't feel like this would really add anything to my routine. So lastly, we're gonna talk about the cleanser. So this cleanser has three surfactants. Surfactants are gonna be what is gonna give those cleaning properties, gonna help clean the skin. The first one is sodium cocoa glycinate as an anionic surfactant which means it's going to have a negative charge sodium cocoa ampho acetate which is going to be amphoteric which meaning it has positive and negative charges on its surface Coco amido propyl bentane, which is also going to be amphoteric. So this variety of surfactants and the charges on the surface is really going to lend itself to help remove things off the skin, particularly if you are a makeup wearer, a regular makeup wearer. And these are all thought to be mild cleansers, so they're going to be less likely to irritate your skin. So if you do find that you are sensitive to fragrance, this would probably be the least likely to cause a reaction on your skin because of the amount of time you're leaving it on there. The, since it's just a rinse off product, it's not going to really have time to really affect your skin. That also being said, is that the antioxidants that are featured in here in forms of the extracts aren't probably gonna really benefit your skin. Usually it's just for marketing purposes, but I think the positives to this product are the variety in the surfactants because this is gonna help you get that makeup off a little bit easier. And overall, I think that this line is definitely not catered to major skincare enthusiasts. We don't see any sort of acids, retinol, vitamin C, nothing really restorative because of those lack of those kind of ingredients. I think this is good for people who are trying to get a little bit better with their skincare routine. Good cleansers and moisturizers go a long way in terms of helping your skincare routine. And it does have antioxidants that are beneficial and I do believe that this will work well under makeup. The only product, like I said, that I would skip is the fat water toner. I don't really feel like, for me, that would have a big benefit, but the other two products definitely seem like ones that I would be interested in. 
So if you learned something today, don't forget to click the like button and the subscribe button if you want to learn more about the science behind your skincare and makeup. And with that, I will see you in my next video.